you everyone for, for being here tonight. Um, my name is Betsy Coe. I'm in Chicago uh, and I've been a Wikitree member. Well, I, like many people, I joined and then I sort of got intimidated and, and I backed off for a while. I would say that I've really been active since very late 2020. Um, and um, some of you may know what I do in real life is I'm a musician. Um, I'm a flutist. And one of the things we have in the music world is something called a masterclass, which is when somebody comes up on stage with a teacher and basically they have a lesson in front of a whole audience. And that way everybody gets to learn, you know, the person on stage, but uh, also the people who are, are just observing. Um, the place where that, and, and so that was sort of my vision for, for this. The place where the analogy breaks down is that I am in no way a master of Wiki Tree. I am, I'm, I may be a little bit ahead of some of you or behind some of you. Um, I do love to, to do Wiki Tree. I, a good day for me is when I get to do a little Wiki Treeing. Um, so, so I, I've learned a much more than I knew two years ago. And I have done the, the Scotland Project's Tartan Trail, which was um, an immense learning experience. So um, the idea is I hope that everybody um, or some of you have some really specific questions where you'd be willing to say, um, hey, could we pull up this profile? And then you tell us um, Smith1234, I'm having trouble adding this person's spouse and then we would work through it together. So, um, and I also want to thank Eowyn for being here with me as a co-host and, and Excited. more of a master than I am. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's so much on WikiTree, it's hard to be a master of it all. Yeah. Before that, that's before we begin, I have a generic question. Does Wikitree have like a mentoring program? Because I'm ready to add a bunch of stuff, but I've got it all on ancestry.com. And it's like, it wants everything from familysearch.org and it's not, it's not all there. So is there, if I asked a question, would somebody say, hey, yeah, there's a mentoring program and somebody could be tied up to me? Yes, um, there, there are a couple of ways for you to get um, to get guidance, Ruth. One would be, um, I mean, for example, if if all if a lot of your um, profiles were all in a specific area, you could join a project and get connected with that group of people. And if they had like a uh, something like the Scotland Project Tartan Trail, you could do that you can uh, you probably were paired up with uh you were greeted by somebody am i right Did yes somebody... i was greeted by somebody and i read through everything my my biggest thing is though i i'm ready to start these profiles but i don't want to screw this up completely and then end up redoing everything i don't understand do they self-form or what okay. happens Okay, w would you be willing to let us work through one of uh, one of them together? Ha! Ah. <laughs> that this is perfect. I mean, this is uh, this is exactly the you know the sort of thing that we were hoping to do. And to just touch on something you said, not everything has to be from family search. I mean, it's, it's wonderful, and I love the fact that you can look at a record and then do copy citation, and then there it is. But you, you can also um, draw from, from other sources. You, you just have to learn how to cite them. Fam, family search is easiest. But Yes, that's what I figured out, which is why I'm not happy, because most of my information is not from there. Right, right. Well, we, would would you be willing to be our first <laughs> come up on the stage and give oh us a my program? gosh that's not what i was planning <laughs> drop my water maybe somebody else has something better i'm ready to look up things okay all right steve what you got i, I got the page ready to go i mean no i i'm looking up for other people i um 
So if you tell me who it is, I, I will pull it up right now. Who, who is that? Yeah. That's somebody messaged to chat. Never mind. I just can't figure out how to. I'm, I'm just on one screen, not a multitude. So I can't. I'm, I'm just not even going to figure out how to tell you where to start. <laughs> Um, I just, I just know I have this information, and I, I, it doesn't want me to duplicate it. It wants me to find it somewhere, and okay. I'm just thinking if I work somehow with somebody, it would go smoothly. Right, right. Well, could, could you tell us? Because what I can do is I can pull up some of the pages you're looking at and screen share them, and then we can look at them together. Is it? Do, do you, are you working on one specific WikiTree profile right now? Uh, if I click to that, am I going to lose you? Probably not. <laughs> or you can, you can put the profile uh, number ID in the chat. I'm in the same situation as Ruth, where I've got a lot of people in Ancestry and I was wondering if there's some way that I could bring them over to Wikitree because Wikitree is a lot more universal, I find, than, than Ancestry. And I'm, I really hesitated in, in trying to put all these profiles in. I have a lot, quite a few people, a lot of family lines. But mm -hmm. I would be, I'd be very happy if there were some kind of a tutorial for people like Ruth and myself that really have things over in Ancestry is kind of a step-by-step, -step. how do we get stuff out of Ancestry? How do we copy the records and things that we already have over there and that we can put them on Wikitree? That would be really helpful. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've done a lot of searches. So I put up my somehow like- Oh, Mon I see it, Montgomery 139. Yeah. So he's my grandfather's grandfather. Okay, I'm it Can I ask, is this how we, this is Deborah, sorry, is this how we use GEDCOM? Is that one way of transferring it across? No. Um, Good. Eowyn, do you want to talk about GEDCOMs? Yeah, and I'm thinking maybe it would be good to have a separate thing about GEDCOMs because that's probably a lot of questions that people have and we could go, I can make a short one or something and we could kind of go through it because it is different on Wikitree than it is with a lot of other sites. But on Ancestry, you can export a GEDCOM of your tree there and then upload it to Wikitree. So oh. that's one way that you can move it over. Um, the tricky part is that we have a 5,000 person limit on GEDCOMs. So if you have a, a lot more than that, then you would need to um, split your GEDCOM, which from Ancestry is a little more complicated because they don't let you do that. So there's some middle ground steps that you have to do for that, um, which I um, I don't have anything to be able to show that tonight, but it's definitely something we could do a video for, like for another time. Okay, yeah. thank you. But there is definitely that. a way to move the information. And if I could comment too, really yeah. quick. The issue with GEDCOM is, of course, the profiles don't look great. So I usually try to convince people to just upload their ancestors one by one because then they have complete control over the data that's being entered into those profiles. And it makes it a lot easier to handle the information once it's been created. It's a lot easier to you know, know what's been cited and so forth. But just GEDCOM creates a lot of I don't know what's the right word, junk on the, t uh, the profiles. So uh, <laughs> that's something I would stray away from unless you already had everything added to Ancestry and you literally had thousands of people on the GEDCOM and it's like the most efficient way for you to do it. Um, and even then, I would encourage, ways, I yeah, even then I would encourage to split into much smaller GEDCOMs just because of the way our process works. You kind of go through and review everything and compare if the profile is already on Wikitree. So if you upload one that has 4,000 people, you're going to spend a fair amount of time going through that. Um, so small chunks is really the best way to move, move things over. 
Yeah, I'm in the pretty fortunate situation that my, I started on Ancestry, but my Ancestry tree is relatively small. Um, I know people have thousands and thousands and I'm in the hundreds and I find, I just have been transferring them over manually and I find that it's, it's a good opportunity to review my research and I do a lot of flipping back and forth between Ancestry where you can look at the, the census records and family search where you can easily copy the citation and then I put it in WikiTree. Um, does everybody know, can, first of all, can everybody see the profile I've screen shared, Ruth's um, Montgomery? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. This is a really good feature that I didn't learn about for a while is down at the bottom on the right, this roots, roots search thing. Um, are people familiar with that? Have you used it? Uh, yeah. I can't get it to work. You no. can't get it to work. No. Okay. Um, so, well, I use it a lot. Ever since I found out about it, I use it a lot. Um, so I just click on it. And then I almost, I almost always go to family search. It doesn't do that for me. In. Yeah, the, sometimes I have to log in, re-log in with my credentials. Mm -hmm. um, it always logs me out. Yeah, me too. It asks me for an ID number. What's that? Eowyn, do you know why that would be? For your ID number, that would be your WikiTree ID. You would just put in the number. No, I'm logged in. Even if you're logged into WikiTree, when you go to root search, it's still going to ask for your ID. It's something like an API client. It's like a separate screen. Yeah. Comes up. Right, I'm just going to try that. Yeah. So that's that's a really nice, quick way to get to uh, to results to your person. Um, I'm going to go back. And Ruth, when you're ready, if you want to, if you want to ask us like what you said you were afraid of making a mistake and by the way don't worry i mean things can get anything can be reversed and undone um the, you know there's nothing irrevocable so the interesting thing is somebody's filled this out since i put this in um because i was trying to figure out how to make a biography for him and i don't know what's going on here <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll also just say treva i see your hand um we'll we'll come to you in just a second it's useful in this square here that you can see uh sandra emmons edit was the last person who did something um you can also go to the the changes on any profile and you can see everything that's been done so since you did something on august 7th sandra did a couple of things on the 12th oh interesting so, yeah maybe sandra's someone you want to collaborate with um could be a cousin of yours yeah could yeah. be and the funny thing is this guy had a brother born several years before with the same name yeah they often do that if they die if the so first son dies they call the same I son have a, a, a picture of his gravestone and i'm wondering how much trouble i'm going to be in when i try and add him of of the uh, uh you mean of the other one with the same name exactly different years but same name he died very the same person. Even the middle name is the same? Yeah, everything the same. I think there is actually probably three kids named this, but I don't have confirmation of the, a third. Well, when you go to add a new pro profile, you always get a list of close things that might be a duplicate. And if you are sure that they are completely separate people, then you can say, no, you should check the box to say, yes, I have, I have examined this and no, it's not the same person. And then it will allow you to create another profile with this, even with the same name. 
Because, I mean, the name will be the same, but the dates will be different, presumably. Life, um, you know, the timeline and the places um, are going to be different. So has this person who's modified this, have they added links to these? Um... Well, let, let's look at what, the, what uh, they did. So again, it's changes. So she added his mother. So she created his mother and then edited the biography, although the biography still looks sparse. But oh, just by adding sources. And then edited, she edited the marriage. So would you, would you like to see how to, you said you were at a loss as to how to do the biography? Do, do you wanna, do, do you know how to edit a profile? Mm, I'm not, I'm just, <laughs> I'm very new to this stuff and I but find that's it okay. That's not okay. That's why intuitively we're... obvious. Yeah. So again, this, this sort of bar uh, up here is very helpful. So you would go to edit. And then this is your opportunity up at the top to make any changes. Um, maybe, maybe I'm just hypothetically, maybe you need to change his middle name. You can do that. All of that stuff up here. Oh, maybe he was born on February 2nd. You can make that change. Um, it's best if you can, if you're certain to, to, to like you, like it's certain on the birth date, if you're certain he was born in South Carolina, that would be good to, to click that. Um, and then coming down, to, <coughs> here's where your bi biography is. Um, and so what I what I like to do is is you can do sources two ways. You can have a list down here or you can do inline citations. Um, I, what I'm going to do, Eowyn, do you think it's OK if we use the find a grave as a citation for the death? Yeah. So so. Okay, we want to, we want to back up this this fact that he passed away in 1988. So I put my cursor there, um, and I also grab this, copy that, okay, and then I go cite my source, and then I paste that in there. Now I can I can get rid of this because now we've. Make sure you have the, the reference code in there too. The reference code. I the, um, I'm trying sources. to describe the symbols now. <laughs> I could type it up. Let me, let it's me type right it there. in the chat. It's there. If you look under the hot like ads sources section. Is it there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. And, and here's the thing before you, well, first of all, we could say, you always have to say what you're doing. So we're improving the bio. But if you want to see how it's going to look in the end, go to preview. And then that's going to create another box below. And you can see now, oh, he passed away in 1888 with this one. So now we have like a footnote type citation. Where is it? You need to add the code to be able to get it to populate. Under oh. the sources section, just copy what? Stephen pasted into the chat the reference. I believe that's the trigger. So put it underneath uh, the header for sources above Alabama select marriages. And okay. it should generate it in a bullet form. Okay, all I see from Steve in the chat is the references. Did yeah. I Yeah. Copy that and then under the sources heading mm -hmm. above Alabama, paste it there. Okay. Oh, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've done a lot of wiki markup and HTML. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. No, that's uh, a double check lesson. it. Make make sure that's accurate, of course. Yeah. yeah so now, if you're ever if you're ever sorry, wondering, can you not explain that all again, please. Okay. Um, from from which part? 
from the bit where you started uh, adding adding your own um, sources. Yes. Um, okay. So if if there was nothing on there at all at the moment. Yes. <coughs> There's not, well, you actually you have to have at least one source to create a profile. That's requir required. Um, so hopefully. So how have, do you add a source? How do you? Okay. Um, well, it's 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 one of the fields when you create a profile. Mm -hmm. um, so and then when the profile is created, that source will automatically appear. Um, maybe we should create a profile from scratch. I think it should. Good idea. Okay. I think All right. Well, let me just show you. So I made that little change thanks to Stephen. And so mm -hmm. now we preview again. And oh, maybe I didn't do it right. Let me double check now. No. Hey, this is why you preview things. <laughs> uh, this... Is it now the, the backslash? So because I can't figure this crap out. It's a backslash. Yeah, take it out. Does so the backslash have to be at the end, slash? not at the start? Did I do it wrong? Now I have to look at my profiles. Yeah. <laughs> it says on the right side of the screen, Betsy, that you're on. Do you see where it says how to add sources on the right side? Uh, yes. Go scroll down oh, a little yeah. bit. It's got it right there. Right. Okay. Does everybody see where my cursor yeah. is? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. This is we're at. Oh, yes. Just got it. Oh, I, I put it at the front. It should be a forward slash in the back. That's but what it is. I, I got it reversed. Yeah, and there's sorry. a space before the slash. And there's a space. Yeah, yeah that's important. So we'll just do that again. Go. See, even I screwed up the time, oh, and time. There you go. So I'll say to everybody who's newer to WikiTree, there's there are a lot of little fussy things like this that you just you get used to. Um and that's a rookie error. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yes, there we go. There it is. Okay, so yeah, there's yeah. our our footnote type citation, um, backing up the fact that the the fact about his death, and then um, um, the rest of the sources. So you could do the same thing if you had the actual link to the document for all these other ones. Like I don't see like the link for the 1850 or the 1860, but I, I, I know. Yeah, I know, this I I actually have these things. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this would be easy to find on on Family Search, and then you could do that copy citation. Well, what's and, funny is he he comes up as Bill, on one of them. And I'm like, I don't even know where the name Bill came from, but it's talking about the right two people. Oh, two thing. People, but... So it's confounding oh. to me. Um, yeah, I mean, people sometimes from census to census, it's a little maddening, but they their names do change. Sometimes it's a middle name that gets used or a nickname. It could have been oh. the information could have been provided by a neighbor you know weird things happen i have a lot of that stuff like yeah. nothing actually looks like it matches but i know it's right mm -hmm. i think you've got to remember a lot of people were illiterate at the time they didn't go to school exactly <laughs> um and then you would just do a full save and now you can see that um if you go to changes um you'll you'll see that i Edited the biography, bio and cooking. Right. Cool. Um, Thank you. I didn't want to ignore Treva. Are you still there? I you had a hand raised, and I'm sorry it took so long to answer your question. No, that's okay. Um, when you were talking about root search, you uh -huh. said you'd be able to see something, and I didn't catch what you were saying, and so I was trying to. Ask the question about Get that repeated, but that's okay. I'll just watch the video. Well, maybe what what we can do is, as we look at other programs profiles, we can do that again because that's that's this root search feature is very useful. 
and then then we'll we'll walk through the process again. I threw a link to what I worked on yesterday. If we want to use that as an example, I provided the link. Oh sure, okay. It's a little simpler than this one in terms of citations and, and biography. I, I fleshed out a biography on mine every time if I uh, create a new profile. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And uh, I, have, I have one we can look at, too, that I'm working on at the moment. Um, Interesting. Um, Steve, you want since this is yours, you want to talk us through it? Uh, yeah. So uh, this is one of the profiles I created. Uh, I was researching some German families in Wisconsin. Uh, actually, some cheesemakers are connected to these people. So now with this profile, I've connected it to the world tree. So they are now connected. And we can see some DNA connections in the corner now that these people are related to them. Uh, and I just I like the biography a lot because it allows me to go through step by step, really establish a timeline of what's happening, you know, get the major events down, try to cite uh, them as I come across them. And then, of course, the sources, I, I also like to highlight with some special bold text just to indicate what that source is. So like for the German one, you can't read it, but it says that it's the birth, so we know it's the birth record. And then the other one's the burial, which, I mean, it's a find a grave, which isn't the greatest source, but at least it tells you where they're buried. So that's something I can use for that. Uh, if I want to cite the deaf, I would want to actually go for a deaf record in that case, for example. But that's just an example of a simple sort of starter profile. Obviously, it can get a lot more bigger uh, and, and convoluted beyond that, you know, with images and, and things like that. But uh, just a good example of something I just started like literally yesterday. And this, this profile is only a day old and, and it's just waiting to get expanded. Great. And with your sources here, were you using that uh, Ancestry? There's uh, the app that it's like an add on an extension. Uh, no. Uh, so the citation for family search was just copy and pasted from the document on family search. Oh. And then the find a grave, I, I just used the citation at the bottom of the page for that. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. I had to manipulate it a little bit uh, to it. get it to look nice, but uh, I, I don't really use the citation app and I haven't, well, I haven't used it in a while, but I have it installed if I wanted to use it. Because uh, if everybody can see up, can everybody see it's, it's circling a little one up there? That's an extension that's really good for um, AON. Do you know? It's the WikiTree Sorcerer. Yeah, um, WikiTree Sorcerer. Yeah, um, that might be a little bit advanced for right now, but um, yeah. down the road, that's handy. Um, I want to get to a couple of questions. Judy, you had your hand up first, and then Kathleen. Yes, um, it's more of an etiquette question than anything. Mm -hmm. um, some of my ancestors' records have been put out there by JEDCOMs by other people. And I have found errors in them, as I'm sure people find errors in my work. Um, I have emailed them directly through Wikitree and not gotten responses. I've put notes on them about, and, and basically what I've asked them, because the errors aren't sourced. Um, I've asked them if they have sources. I've gotten no response. I have put notes out there about what I've found that contradicts what they have and where I have sources. I put those sources out there. At what point is it okay to just go change stuff? I, you know, it's very frustrating because I'd like to see accurate information out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, if you've made a good faith effort to communicate, um, you know, generally, I've, I've found people to be very responsive, but but not always. And so if you really have tried, then you made the good faith effort. And I would say if you have credible sources to back it up, then go ahead and make the change. Okay. And, and there was, there is one person who has a number of profiles for my family. And Somewhere I saw, and, and I may be misremembering this, but I remember seeing a note somewhere where he said, if anybody would like to take over these profiles, email me. And I did that and have not heard anything back. And is there, you know, I don't know, you know, people get ill, people die, people move on to other interests. Is there any way to um, take over a profile, you know, once somebody else has it, but isn't responding. Hmm. Uh, Eowyn, do you, 
There, there is, yeah, it's actually, we have an unresponsive profile manager process. And um, there is a help page for that that I can link to in the chat. Um, but basically, um, it just involves leaving a comment, waiting so many days, you know, just trying to contact. And then you can file an unresponsive profile manager report. It goes to one of our team members and we'll try and reach out and contact them and either work with them if they answer or if they don't, then you can let us know which profiles you want to manage. Oh, super. And we can take care of that. Very good. Yeah, Thank you. Stephen just posted it right there. Thank you both for your answer. Yeah, I try. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kathleen, did you have a question? Yes. Thank you. Um, Stephen, um, if I could, if we could scroll back up to the biography on this new report, right? Now, you have a reference for Thanks the for birth yeah. and a reference for the uh, burial. And let's say you found the marriage record. Um, if you add a footnote to that, mm -hmm. uh, does the burial automatically change to footnote number three, or do you have to do some uh, judging? Oh, it's just going to push it down. So whatever mm -hmm. order your citations are in the biography, it'll automatically adjust the location of those in the sources field. So okay. if it gets cited in the first line, so even if it's not chronological, like you needed to cite you know, something from the tombstone that stated something on it that wasn't available anywhere else, it might show up as the first source even though, you know, it's like the last thing that happened in their existence was they, you know, they died, got a tombstone. So it, it uh, can be applied anywhere in the text, and then it's just going to correspond to the order of the text. Okay, great. Thank you. It's yeah, no problem. smart that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, and another question I had was I'm doing some research in Canada, and I'm uh, starting to do some earlier research, and so do I put the names of the places as they were known during that time period or as they were known today? I would say well, as the time period. Yeah, a lot of times when you go to add a place, um, as you start typing it in, um, uh, you'll get a pull down menu and you'll see, you might see like three different listings for the place you want with date ranges. And okay. so you would want to, you know, pick the date, the date range that's appropriate for the event that you're, you're documenting. Okay, and great. Can, Thank you. And I then, can also uh, comment on this too. Oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead, Steve. Uh, so if you, if you scroll to the top and you see the birth location, uh, yeah. you'll notice that it's referencing Prussia and right. Dutcherbund, which I've written in German means German Confederation. Obviously that doesn't exist anymore, but Germany didn't exist until 1871. So right, any right. dates before that, I don't put Germany in. I actually override it and I type in what the actual uh, municipality was or, or country or entity at that time. And, and even before that, if you go back to 1806, there wasn't even a German Confederation because uh, Napoleon had invaded at the time. Uh, it was the Holy Roman Empire. So then that would have been, you know, the entity before that. So, so I, I always try to put in the historical names of the places whenever possible. Um, when you do categorization, though, it's going to have the modern location because that's just how categorization is. Okay, um, already. Thank you. Yeah. And, and then one last question I had is, um, as I've been adding profiles, I've been doing like birth, you know, the best resource for the birth, you know, the original for and for the marriage and for the death, that type of a thing. But yet I noticed when I'm looking at other profiles, sometimes people have are putting on like five different birth records and you know i mean the this five different references for the same or similar birth record or you know and and the same thing i mean how much is is one good one enough or do you all like all that extra information on there um i i think more is always better but but sometimes um you know my my profiles if you look at all the profiles that i'm working on they're in different stages and mm -hmm. some of them are really really complete with all the possible every source i could possibly find um others are sparser and maybe i maybe i just have a dump of of um of sources and i haven't really done a bio um you know at the very least i always like to document have one source for birth marriage and death 
Okay, That's great. Oh. Well, thank you for your thank you for answering these questions. I appreciate it. I'm I'm new and I'm just learning also. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Um, Carolyn. Oh, hi. Um, my questions about um, when you find profiles like whole families and um, they've, the biography is OK, but the sources have got a lot of S and stuff after them that don't link to anything. So I assume they come from GEDCOMs where they've fixed up the biography, but um, they haven't picked up the sources. So there's no sources that I find that link to anything. So can, if I've got sources, can I put them in and then delete all that stuff? Is that okay to delete it? Mm -hmm. yes. It is. Right, okay, Yes. Yeah. 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 And if, if it's just jumble that's not um, a source that's going to lead anybody to anything, then. Yeah. yeah you, okay. You can and, that. and, then um, would that qualify for the challenge, the um, sorcering challenge? If you know, like they did have stuff there, but it didn't link anywhere. I'm actually for this the monthly sorcerers challenge. Yes. For the yeah. Them? No, no, the uh, monthly one. Yeah. I haven't looked at their um, rules recently, but I I would have to check with them. Right. So okay. I know they do it a little bit different. I know their rules are a little different than like the source of our wiki tree. I just don't remember off the top of my head. Um, right. Okay. So maybe I need to go back and look at that. Yeah. It should, it should say on their page. Right. Okay. I hadn't thought about doing I, that. I want to say yes, it would. Cause you are, I think that's where it's different is that like with wiki tree, if there's stuff there, we consider it a source, but I think for the sorcerer's challenge, they want the actual links and stuff so i think it would but i'm not 100 percent sure right okay thanks yeah and there are there are whole crews of wiki triers who spend a lot of their time cleaning up profiles like that yeah i i enjoyed things. doing the cleaning but i just wasn't sure about taking out that that stuff i mean when, when it's a full gedcom download and it's on the whole thing's rubbish then i don't mind you yeah. know using that gedcom cleaning thing um but you can't do that if they've already changed the biography. Right, right. Yeah. Like like Steve said, non-verbally. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of cleaning. Wax yes. on, wax off. Wax off. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Uh, Kathy, Kathy B. Uh, yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm also new-ish to WikiTree. I started it in April. And I, I'm glad we're talking about bios tonight because that was my main question. I've I've come across several different kind of formats, and you, you guys may have already answered my question by showing it with the footnotes. But I've also seen something with like a table of contents mm. that then takes you down to other parts of the bio, and then I've seen a few, some of which I did myself because I didn't know how to do this and now I do, where I'm just putting in as many sources as I have and then I was going to figure it out later. Mm -hmm. um, so is there a preferred format? Uh, I mean, ultimately at the very end of the day, the inline sources like what we were showing you how to do is um, the ideal but don't be afraid, like if you just have a list of sources, that's awesome. Like don't yeah, feel so. pressure to have to have it formatted and, you know, because eventually someone will, will come along and probably do that um, in line. I just want to show about, about um, the, the, oh, I don't want to be on, I, let me, I don't want to be on your, by the you way. Can you can edit it, I don't care. Well, all right, let me just. <laughs> Okay, I, I'll do it and then I won't save it. So do you see how under sources, we have the two equal signs and then sources and then, so like sometimes you might wanna add something like research notes, which are a big thing on Wikitree, especially if there's something where, you know, it's still up in the air, some site sources still need to be located, there's a discrepancy. Um, so that's how you would do that. If you preview it, then you'll see you've got the heading uh -huh. and I can add whatever uh -huh. I want. Magic. Yeah. Magic. Um, oh. <laughs> I'll just take that out. 
just hit the cancel button. Yeah, yeah. And also, let me show this is this is handy. If you decide you don't want to do anything, you know, just return to profile without saving. And then nothing, nothing changes. And while we were talking about uh, table of contents, uh, biographies, I added two more links to some of my ancestors that I did work a lot on. So people want to see more complex uh, profiles. You know, the, the, the first one is intermediate. And I'd say the second one is much more developed because he's kind of a brick wall for me. So I, I've thrown literally everything at the, the wall <laughs> to try to break it down. <laughs> and you can look at those if you want to. It's just uh, Sheila. Um, I was in family search where I back a couple of years ago, I'd started to put in uh, one of my my tree lines on the maternal side. And then I <clears throat> I haven't had really very much time and I found WikiTree and I thought, oh, this sounds fantastic. So I came over to WikiTree and got bogged down again with a time constraint. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what I went, then I went back to family search about a month ago, and I was astonished to see that the family tree that various people have been working on it, and they, they're somehow over there, you can merge trees or whatever. And suddenly my tree goes back to like 1066 or something. And I'm thinking, wow, That'll there's break. some really interesting people. And the, the, like my great, great grandmother, I have a source for her. I know she existed and everything, but somebody has carried it away back a lot further. I would love to be able to, is it legal to take the information that somebody else has found and post it on another website and post it somewhere else? I, I mean, a source is a source. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, if you believe I think in research, yeah. It sounded like she's asking, like, if she did a, if she copied the, all the people that have been added to the tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it legal to, to take somebody else's research and all their work and add it to, say, in WikiTree, which is really a world tree? I don't know how that works. I would so love I, to be able to extend the tree somewhere other than on family search. I have two thoughts on that. One, like Betsy was just saying, a source is a source. So if they have your great great grandmother and they have a birth record for her, there's no reason why you can't add your great great grandmother and her birth record. If it's someone's like written research or their photos or something, you know, that's maybe not like a record source. You don't want to just copy that over. But no, I, I wouldn't do that. But it's yeah. it's really it's all the steps they 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 found all the records. Somebody else has found all the records for these people that go back a long way, and they have they found the records. I haven't, but they're connected to my one of my relatives. Yeah, records. I mean, records are records available for anybody. So. It's just the nature of genealogy, a collaborative genealogy, isn't it? Yeah. We're not all going to be able to do the work ourselves. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's that's helpful to know because I've got, you know, I've sort of stopped doing things because I got stuck in. I said, but somebody else has done a lot of work and there there are the records. They're out there. I just hadn't found them myself. But you have to know they're real. Well, that's then I'd have to do the research to be sure they really are real for yeah. sure. But anything that's been digitized, it looks pretty, it looks pretty real unless I found something else that was digitized that had the same name and the same dates, but it was a different record. Mm -hmm. I might question then whether even whether my record was the correct record. Mm -hmm. That's genealogy. Yes. <laughs> I hope that I hope to have more time to work on this because that's fa absolutely fascinating. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah the I fact. Really, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say the the facts are not intellectual property, but the um, stories that are written from the facts can be intellectual property, and the also the digital images you might want to check, and you might want to go back to the original source of the image and get you know and take your own 
image from that instead of using someone else's photo, which might also be an intellectual. Well, I think that in, in one case on, on uh, not on Wikitree, because I have very little up there, um, where I was astonished to see where I have the original old black and white photo of my mother. And I doubt very much that this other person who is a distant cousin would have the same thing, but she's put her name on it. And I thought that's odd. And she's posted it on that website as, you know. Yeah, that happens, unfortunately. Yeah, that, a lot of that happens on Ancestry. That happens all the time. I've been yeah, sure. well, that's, yeah. that's where it happened. And so, I mean, I could write to her and say, do you happen to have an original copy of that photo? If not, I do. Mm -hmm. But to do it politely so that she would attribute it to me to, as being my photo and not hers. I mean, otherwise, I'd have to go into photo elements and, and, and say property of Sheila, you know, type of thing. Put a... a a digital watermark on it of some sort. And I'm wondering whether should I be doing that for my old photos? Yes. Is it going to prevent people from using them? No. It but won't you, prevent them, but it'll have your mark yeah. on it. You can order a takedown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. But also if you posted it on Ancestry, they're allowed to use it. Well, that's what's happened. Yeah. Um, it's I'm part of your agreement. I'm grateful that Wikitree is is pretty strict about um, photos and and you know we're not supposed to put up anything unless it's I mean well if it's a, a photo of a person if I see something on Ancestry I always get written permission from the Ancestry user. I explain what Wikitree is. I say I'm doing this profile. I provide the link. May I put your profile up there? Uh, the photo up there and then when I do if I get the permission which I usually do then I will credit it um, posted um, with permission of ancestry user so and so yeah exactly yeah thank you very much that answers my uh, question and I was just gonna add uh, I don't deal with ancestry I stay away from it because these can be situations but if I was going to say uh, do anything regarding find a grave so people take photos of uh, gravestones and upload them to find a grave. I will not use that photo. I will link to it, obviously, in my sources. But I will go out of my way to take my own photo of the gravestone, ensuring that I have the copyright of it. So then I can upload that photo to Wikitree, and I know for a fact that it is my photo. So that's a different situation to get around it if you're concerned about running into, you know, other information or, or images that are somebody else's images, but that might involve an extra work that you might not want to do. So it just depends on the person, really. What ha what happens when you've taken a photo and somebody from Find a Grave stole it? You bring it up to them, <laughs> report it to Find a Grave. Yeah, I have that. I have that situation where I took a photo of the family thing and somebody else took it and stuck it in their tree because they're related to me. And they it, they they don't even have the right information, which is even more confounding. Oh, oh, mine, it's the right information. <laughs> so They don't even know where this graveyard is. It's in a freaking swamp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I'm I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Lorene. Yes, Lorene. <laughs> um, I have a couple questions. The first one is about images, um, and is there some guideline on <clears throat> sizing? I was surprised when I put up my first pictures how large they showed up. I I thought they were just sort of standard JPEG size, and all of a sudden they're huge on the on the biography. You link us? Yeah, uh, a profile ID. Um, Campbell 27114. Okay. okay, you're gonna look it up. What was the number again? 27114. Okay. 
So if you look at, um, go back up and click on my father or my mother. Okay. Looks normal to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Scroll, scroll down. Okay. So these are okay this size. Mm -hmm. I don't need to. Yeah. I. I mean, it, it sort of. It seems Before. proportional to the text. How are you viewing the website? On um, PC. Okay. Yeah. That. That's the standard uh, image bar. So they, they all show up that size in the that side of the page. And then the text is, is fixed in nature on the left-hand side of the screen to about that width. That seems okay. You know, yeah, you know I think my cousin edited these because they were bigger before. And the caption was below the picture. Did that format change? Are you looking at the images tab? Hmm. This might be different. See where it says engagement photo? Clarence, I mean, that, that type, that caption was below the picture. I mean, this was below. And it was text, not a link. I don't know why it's a link. Mm -hmm. Click on the link and see where it goes. Oh, oh, just to the, the, the image details, yeah. Did they do something, Eowyn? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I, I'd have to have seen what she was looking at, I think. Yeah. Website's always updating, right? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of interesting. Looks like... Looks like you're the one who's done the most recent things. Yeah. Um, The one place where I'm on WikiTree where I'm used to manipulating image size is when you're inserting it within within a, a post or on a, a free free space page and that's that's different um, but when you're just putting it on a profile I think it just it's standard it does it doesn't matter there's no guidelines like try to make it mm -hmm. x pixels by x pixels yeah, I looked at our photo. I looked at our photos FAQ to see if we have anything about size, and we don't. And I, yeah. I think whatever size you upload the photo as, like on this screen, the images tab, they're going to show it all different kinds of sizes. Mm -hmm. So you might have one that looks really big on here, like see the marriage license, right? How big that is. But when you go to the profile, they're all going to be, you know. There's kind of a standard size for those on the side. Like, see mm -hmm. how much smaller the marriage license is there. Yeah. So. Okay, so that's interesting. There was a change because it used to be like a photo caption, and now it's a link. So that's interesting. Okay. Um, the other question I have is any advice on sources for birth and death records, like without paying a county. To <laughs> to look it up for you well um again i would i would really recommend uh the root search starting there um and yeah i've if, looked at family search yeah if, if you don't have ancestry um then family search is is probably your next best bet and I, their their collection of records is is phenomenal yeah um are you not finding what you want there no Hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking that maybe the record was put up by somebody who was just adding stuff. Um, and if you have someone who, for example, isn't actually buried in a cemetery, mm -hmm. they were like cremated and thrown over the ocean or something, there's not going to be a record except with the official death record, right? Local... Uh cemetery here has a record of all uh, cremations as well even if they're not buried there what so what is i'm just saying in their in their records of burials they also have a record of cremations like local county records it, no this is the actual cemetery, cemetery. 
So they do, they've got all the cremations in there and say buried elsewhere. Oh, okay. Thank you. Doesn't mean it's everywhere. <laughs> of course. Great. Um, G. Hauser. Gauss. Um, Gene. 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 Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is just um, right alongside with that. Um, so uh, I looked up some vital records. Let's say uh, priests. Uh, uh, whatever in uh, Wisconsin. And um, so what I did was I cited, um, instead of paying $15 just to get the record, which I can't do. Oh, uh, I know that I wrote, pain. Yeah. So Not I wrote down, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I wrote down the reference details, you know, county, volume number, page number, a microfilm reel, uh, index volume, uh, the sequence number, and then collection. And I wrote the, um, I copied the um, H, uh, the, you know, URL and location at Wisconsin Historical Society Library, second floor, Madison, Wisconsin. And I don't remember which one I used this for. I was trying to find that, but um, I would do a, you know, a sighting on that. Is that, would that work? Yeah, it might make stereo. Yeah, sounds like it would. Yeah, from what you described. Solution. Like, it uh, sounds like you're describing how someone else would be able to go and find it. Yeah, as long as I, yeah, just put everything I can put down. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. The other thing you can do, um, I'm just going to go to my dad's profile, um, you can say um, uh, like his naturalization certificate and his death certificate. Um, I didn't necessarily want to post them. Um, right. And so I just said, um, you know, I have it. It's in right. my possession. You're not actually allowed to post it because the municipality has rules against reposting them, right? Yeah, like when Wisconsin I, will tell me not to copy it. When I was very, very new to WikiTree and I was <laughs> doing my dad's profile, I put up his death certificate as a picture, and then I thought, no, that's not a good idea. Yeah, and yeah. I took it down. So um, that that's what you described, um, Gene. Sounds sounds very thorough. Okay, good. Thank you. Sure. Um, oh, wow. Well, if we wanted, I was going to say we would try and create a profile, but we're coming up on it on an hour. So, um, shall we plan if, if people want next time, what we can do is we can create a profile from scratch and walk through that. Why don't we plan on starting with that next time? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I think that would be a awesome idea i mean you guys have opened my eyes and i think i know kind of where to go but i would really like to watch more i don't want to just start all this and have to redo it for sure Good. so glad it was helpful and i think when i was when i was sure new the best thing that was helping me was on the saturday youtube live casts they would put up a lot of profiles and just seeing other profiles was so helpful yeah if you go and watch those you'll get to see a lot of different things and they kind of inadvertently will show you different features of wiki too while they're clicking through things so it's another good place to just go and be able to learn Great. Well, thank you all for being here tonight. Any any last last questions? Quick questions. Just thank you. I got very nice when everybody, but what Oh, seems like we could did a good thing. Yeah. Good job, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, people, for coming. Like we we were hoping that we get a good crowd with good questions, and we did so. Yeah, at one point I saw that we had 43 people.
Yeah, yeah, which is great. Yeah. So please, please come back. This will be happening the first Thursday of every month. Same time. Same bad channel. Same bad channel. <laughs>